Oh hi! This week we're finally sewing the velvet Our Flag Means Death bags. Well, I made a bunch, but you're just gonna see me make one of them in here because I did have them made for some of the events and I, I went kind of turbo mode for a month there where I did four or five events in about a five week span. So I am tired, but I have nothing booked for the next month at least. I am ready to chill. I have applied to other stuff, but I haven't heard back and I probably won't hear back for a couple weeks. And then I'm gonna try to put another one together at the brewery I work for. By the way, if you were wondering, the Halloween market I put together, it was my first time making a market happen. I mean, the owner at the brewery also did a lot of the work, but it actually went like really well for everyone that I asked. It went well for me, both as a artist that was selling their work there and like it, it seemed to be a good turnout. And that made me really happy because we had a winery that was visiting. We had a food truck outside. I was one of six people vending inside. And then like the tap room itself, it seemed pretty well trafficked. So that made me really happy that I got to like have another event where I supported myself financially, but also got to help some other people get some local support. So yeah, I'm feeling good at like giving myself some credit for having a successful event take place. Very proud of the idea and that it was executed fairly smoothly from what I can tell. So yeah, I will let y'all know whenever the next one happens. Probably early December, but We'll get there when we get there. Anyways, I am unfortunately gonna have to take a lot of time to photograph and list a lot of the stuff in my Etsy shop. I will make sure I have these bags, but the time this video is up, those listings will be live. I know I say I'm gonna list stuff by the time a video is up, and then I don't because it's the fucking pits making listings on that hell site. But I had a fucking mental breakdown trying to put together my own website, so. I just get so quickly overwhelmed with that stuff. I, ju I, I just, I can't, I can't wrap my head around it. I can't seem to like do it. So sticking with Etsy for the time being. I have a link to my shop in the description, but you can also just look for Sewing Nerd Studios. I feel like the spelling has to be like so extremely perfect. Like I have a hard time searching for people's shops if there's like one letter off or if someone looked up like Sewing Nerd Studio. I. I wonder if it would even bring my shop up. I don't know, Et Etsy's frustrating on many levels. <laughs> but that is not what I'm here to bitch about today. I'm not here to bitch about anything. We're gonna make a bag and it's gonna be lovely. And I, I already finished it, so like, I think it came out well. And I have had a lot of practice making dice bags as of late, so I'm also excited to share the project with you because I assume some of y'all would also like your own dice bags. Okay, so I am making my bag with some velvet that is actually the same as my depression robe that I made a few weeks ago, a month ago, a couple months ago, sometime earlier this year. And yes, I cut up that robe. I have a different pattern I want to try to make myself another depression robe and I still have so much of that fabric. I'm looking at it right now. It just velvet is such a pain in the ass to work with because it has like the pile. So especially sewing it right sides together is surprisingly complicated as you will see me struggle with. But it also makes such a goddamn mess no matter how little of a piece you're working with. So until all of the seams are finished and there's no raw edges ha happening or anything exposed like that. So obviously once it's contained, the velvet doesn't shed like once the thing is finished, but until that point, it's just gonna be fluff everywhere for days, forever. That's part of why I'm wearing this color top is because it kind of matches the bag. So it wouldn't be as noticeable or frustrating having it get on me. You know what I mean? The revelation I had is I have tried making drawstring bags before. It's been a minute since, but I've tried multiple different ways to go about it. And I've liked what I've come up with, but only so much because I, I felt like I wasn't quite there with like getting the closure to shut completely. Like I wanted a completely sealed bag that you could like close tight. And that just wasn't happening with the single strand of ribbon. And then with advances in ribbon technology, I was able to figure out that there are drawstring bags where there's two ribbons and they're going opposite directions and then you pull both and you get like a very tight close at the top. And you can even like tie those ends shut and it will keep it super closed or like wrap them around the top and get it like really, really sealed. But stuff won't fall out this way. And I don't know why it was so difficult for my brain to like conceptualize having two ribbons. I don't know, I never thought to overlap them. 
until I was literally just staring at a drawstring bag. Like, I've actually been given people's used, like, Amazon gift bags. Like, look at this guy. Obviously, it's stuffed with things. This, speaking of our flag means death, is all the fixins for my Steed Bonnet outfit. And, uh, you know what I still haven't made? It's October though, baby. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. If nothing else, <laughs> this has to happen. There's actually one other project I desperately want to get done this month that I did a sketch for like six months ago. I put it in the zine that I made for everyone over on Patreon. Yeah, like sometime in the summer and I have yet to make most of those garments. And of course now I'm making a checklist in my head of all the other things that are in that zine that I still haven't made yet. We're gonna get there. I can't make everything all at once and like there will always be other weeks to make other projects projects is gonna be fine. Also bold of me to assume how much time I have left on this planet, but that's also not a road we're gonna go down today. <laughs> Ugh, things have gotten dark. Anyway, I'm gonna set this aside, but just it was looking at this kind of bag. It, it does this and it can close all the way and just what a concept. <laughs> Fucking mind-blowing. Where I've always made bags like that one continuous loop, like it's one piece for the rounded side with a circular bottom. So there's only been like a buttonhole or a gap in the stitching on one edge. So it only ever had one ribbon going through. And then finally seeing a bag like that was like, but if I have a seam both sides, if I have that loop cut into two pieces, we can like make shit happen. <laughs> I figured starting with the round bit would be easiest because I feel like circle math is impossibly hard for me. So I traced a little bit bigger than this magnetic cup that I keep all of my pattern weights in. I really need to make myself a new set of things. I like that they're metal because I'm able to store them this way, but I need to like revamp these or just make a new set. I actually got this for not that much money at a Harbor Freight Tools. If you want like cheap tools to just try out something for a craft project or like you want something you don't have to be precious about, that's a great place to go. I have found like coping saws and these things just a variety of different materials that if you're a crafter can be used even if their intended purpose is for something else. So yeah, these are originally for like nuts and bolts if you're working on a car or something. A quick place to toss metal bits you're working with and like keep in one spot. Oh and actually I keep one up here so that if I have pins it's magnetic so it stays stuck to my sewing machine. Now that you know with a granular description about the circle that I traced, just what it, whatever size suits your fancy. I guess you could like measure it out if there's something specific you need to put in there, but this just seemed good. So I had traced around this with some chalk and then cut around, like I gave it a quarter inch or a half inch around just to like account for seam allowance, which again, that's hard to measure on a circle. <laughs> At least me, I like, I can't wrap my head around it. But I had obviously cut out all these pieces, so sorry you didn't get to witness me actually cutting all the, the stuff out. But I also cut these apart like three weeks ago. And I think I cut up eight, six, seven? I think it was seven total, because I sold one at Grand Con. I brought five with me yesterday, and this was the final one today that I sewed. So it, it must have been seven that I had had put together. And man, it's making me very much want to print more of my fabric. Not necessarily on velvet, but I have my like jackalope lino block that I don't know if I've ever shown y'all. Patreon folks that were around, I think that was beginning of this year or maybe end of last year, sometime in the past year, I sent them some jackalope artwork. I think probably prints at one point and patches, maybe a different point, or I sent both. I, I, I don't remember. I try to take notes about the things I send out just to like keep track because I have ideas about things, but I visualize it so vividly in my head that sometimes I forget if that is actually something I've made or if I just thought about it really hard. That happens when I'm talking to someone too. If I think of something I want to say to them, but it's just like not a good time, I'll just think about it. And when I think about things, I'm often like playing a movie in my head essentially, but then I forget if I've actually said it out loud or just thought about it really hard. It makes me feel completely unhinged. That is a chronic problem that I have. It's like, did I imagine this or is this real life? <laughs> Anyway, I have this cool little like measury wheel thing that my fairy god Cheryl sent me. That's fun to measure around, but you, you can also take like a soft measuring tape and kind of like wrap it around and get the measurement that way. But I got 15 inches, I think was the, t yeah, 15 inches because then 
when I went to make, I just made them into squares. I didn't know how tall to make the bag where I like this ratio of width to height. I feel like anything taller would have just looked silly without it being wider. So I like the idea of it being square. The first dice bag I made, it was just kind of a, eh, we'll see if it works. And I like how it came out, but obviously scale up or down depending on your needs. This is a, about the size of my coffee mug. So perhaps can contain one cup of goods. Also the shape that it takes when I have it cinched up. Oh, by the way, I used a flannel lining because all the other bags that I've made that weren't the velvet one, I had a flannel lining and just like quilting cotton for the outside. So that and or a velvet outside, like having the flannel interior gives it enough structure that it can just kind of like hang out and not completely flop down, especially if it has stuff in it, it's going to sit up, but it looks like a cartoon prop money bag. Like I've never played Animal Crossing, but I, I know that there are money bags involved. I've also played like Spyro the Dragon, where I think there's a character actually called money bags. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, uh, I was talking about the jackalope thing before I went on this tangent. I want to print more fabric and making these and just interacting with hand printed fabric that I made again, kind of re-sparked that desire. So that is also the hope. Anyway, bag measurements, my goodness. So the square panels I did are eight by eight because the circle was 15 inches. And with my seam allowance, having an eight by eight sewn together, a half inch seam allowance is going to take off an inch either side because there's two seams bringing that in. But that 15 inch circle is going to be that little bit smaller because I'm going to be sewing partway into the circle. So it's going to be like a narrower bit. And I, I'm hoping, I mean, it worked out, but my hope was that having the first inch taken in makes the circumference 15 inches, which matches the circle. But then when I stitch them together, the circle is going to be a little bit smaller. So that bag also has to be that little bit smaller. So I took the other inch in. I hope that math makes sense. A thing I feel like I always regret doing is making the channel for the ribbon too close to the top edge. Like I want there to be this almost like flowery bit up top and like have there be a good like lip where I always do this bit so close to the top and that doesn't get me the effect that I want. So I folded one of the panels in half and then I don't want the channel to be at the halfway point. So I just went up one more inch. I just made a notch and I made the gap about half an inch. I then immediately ignored these notches when I sewed the bags together. So I had to unpick those after the fact because I apparently forgot, even though I've made, I think like 50 dice bags in the past couple weeks. <laughs> oh, and because I sewed so many things, including other velvet bags, I did do a deep clean in my machine just to get all of the fluff out. I'm sure I'm gonna have to do it again because I just re-fluffed it with this velvet bag, but it, it shouldn't be too bad where I like using just a dry paintbrush to get stuff out. For some reason, the fluff really sticks to the bristles. So I have found the most success cleaning my machine out with that. Okay. Once the lining and the outer square panels were sewn right sides together at the left and right side. And then at some point I remembered to unpick the channel for the ribbon on the outer fabric. You don't do that to the lining, but you do need a gap in the side of the lining. So I also unpicked that like towards the bottom. Then once I had those two seam lines on the left and right side, I folded it in half so that those stitch lines lined up. And then I marked a notch in the center. And then I took the circles that I cut, I folded them in half once and then twice and then notched those points so that I found the quarter points of the bag bottom. Then those four points lined up with the notches and the side seams of the tube of the square panels that are sewn together. So then I just pinned those. I don't pin very often when I'm sewing stuff anymore, but especially because this fabric is such a pain in the dick to sew with and anything involving the circles, I absolutely pin that stuff in place just because it, it, it keeps everything even and things can go so poorly so quickly, especially because you're dealing with the bias on only some parts of the circle. And that's going to make it a little more stretchy versus other parts of the circle that have zero stretch. So it's just very helpful to pin 
when there are round bits involved. <laughs> and then, yeah, I took my time sewing along here. I sewed from the circle side and not the tube side. I had my needle down. I was doing short stitch lengths. I also lifted the presser foot up a bunch and like pivoted many times. I also moved the layer on the bottom out of the way because sometimes it kind of wanted to bunch up and I didn't want any puckers happening here. So that's how I got like a nice smooth edge down here. And then I didn't do this with the lining because it's going to be tucked inversely but with the outer layer I really like stitching the seam allowance down from the outside I guess top stitching technically so before I attached the lining to the outer layer I did do that round of top stitching which is kind of a pain and depending on the size of your bag this may not even be possible it just makes it lay really nicely and it's that little bit more of reinforcement on the bottom as well because that's where most of the stress is going to be on the bag oh and somebody knows we're like not that far from the end of this project so he wanted to come and say hello he does not appreciate me having to run the vacuum so much working with velvet because he he hates it so deeply also, are you the most smiley boy? He smiles so much, like he pulls his cheeks back more than like most dogs I've ever seen. Almost jarring how adorable it is. Anyways, once the lining tube and circle were sewn together and the outer tube and circle were sewn together, it's time to attach the two. So I did make the seam allowance a little teeny bit wider by like an eighth of an inch on the lining to make it that little bit smaller because it's going to fit inside of the outer shell. So I tucked that right sides together inside the outer layer and then stitched around the top. This is where it's super important to make sure you have that gap in the lining because once those are sewn together, use that gap to flip everything right side out and then you just stitch that shut really quick. I think my gap was like maybe two inches long at most, so super easy to sew back up. Then I feel like this is the most satisfying part of a bag project is when you tuck the lining in once everything is right sides out and just to give it a really nice finished edge, I did top stitch with the lining tucked ever so slightly towards the inside so there's like a bit of rollover of the outer fabric. I just, I think it looks really nice so that the lining isn't at risk of like showing from the outside. Then the very last bit of sewing is making the stitching lines for the channel for the ribbon. Now I have this piece of tape on my machine because I made so many of these bags that it seemed worth it to just like stick something on there as a permanent guide. Not permanent, it's tape. It can come off. But sometimes I use just like pen marks or a sticker or something. I do have a magnetic seam guide, but it only works on the metal parts of my machine. And cause it is mostly plastic, it doesn't actually go as far to the right as I need it to, where once I have my industrial machine one day, everything's metal and it, I can put the seam guide any goddamn where I want. But anyway, I did two rows of top stitching about half an inch apart from each other, maybe closer to an inch actually, just it can't hurt giving a little bit more wiggle room. And I also made sure to poke the seam allowance open at the little gap in that side seam. On the bags that aren't velvet, I did press the seams open before I stitched and stuttered the lining to the outer fabric. That's a good point to do that before I even attach the bottoms to the outer fabric. I don't have the like I don't know, it almost looks like a dog brush, like this board that you can use for pressing velvet. I don't have something like that, so I just didn't iron any of this. Also, there's no way this isn't just all plastic, so I didn't want to melt anything. And then, yeah, I went to cut two pieces of ribbon, did a lot of test runs for this, and figured out I really like ribbon length that is three times the width of the bag. So if you remember, our bag pieces were eight inches wide. So I cut each ribbon piece to be 24 inches, which is eight times three, right? Yes, that's eight times three. And then I took this little tool. You can use a safety pin, whatever you need. Thread it through the channel. Oh wait, actually before we threaded it, because it's polyester ribbon, I melted the ends with a lighter just so nothing frayed. You'd also do it with a candle, but you get like smoke marks on it. So if it's a darker ribbon, that's fine, but it's a little bit more noticeable on anything brightly colored. Find that these like flat satin finish ones, you can just like wipe it off and it comes off no problem. But like grow grain ribbon and stuff, it really kind of gets into the fibers when you do that. So I don't always use a candle. So yeah, then I threaded it through. So like the side I started putting the ribbon through is the same side that piece came back out. So like both ends of the same piece of ribbon are coming out the same side. Is that making sense? Y'all probably had this figured out well before I did. I feel like it shouldn't have taken me quite this long to figure this technique out, but here we are, you know, learning new things every day. <laughs> Whenever people are like, oh, I wish I could sew like you sew it. You know so much. Uh, 
not everything, certainly. Like, there are many, many, many gaps in my knowledge, and I hope to continue learning every goddamn day of my life. And then, yeah, once the ribbons were threaded through, I just tied some knots so that nothing got pulled out accidentally. Now I have a fully closable, cinchable drawstring dice bag, complete with bird stamp, because brain rot. And yeah, there, finally, is the velvet bag that I've been talking about making for god knows how many weeks. Thank you all for being patient with me while I worked on my events. I'm very thankful because that's a part of my income I hadn't had for a couple of years there. Glad to be back doing that. Like, I missed events. Obviously, there are factors that make me nervous about doing them, but in general, it it's just... It's nice. It's a lot of work and it's exhausting and I was so fucking cranky after Granite Con was done a couple weeks ago that my brain just shut off for a few days there. I just, I couldn't people. I was in a bad mood because I was just so completely burnt out. I also hurt myself pretty bad this past week with all the sewing I was doing because I still juggle multiple other jobs. Everything is physically taxing. It's not like I'm weightlifting or something super extreme, but it's a lot of repetitive motions and it's a lot of stress on the upper body in particular, so I tried to take a lot of rest time. I did watch the final season of Stranger Things, which I'm not gonna spoil anything. It is nine episodes and all of them are like movie length. So I got to marathon watch them in the span of about 30 hours and I love it so much. This morning I have gone in a very deep, like I fell off a cliff into the Joseph Quinn who plays Eddie Munson rabbit hole. Like I don't ever want to leave. I love him so much. <laughs> I kind of want to rewatch that whole season again, like right now, but it's also so time consuming and I know I won't have that available to me for a while. And now I finally understand that fucking TikTok sound that came out earlier in the summer that I, I had no idea what it was referencing, but now I get it. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, as I said, I'm gonna list some of these in my Etsy shop. I have a whole bunch of other stuff that like, I'm not gonna have everything up at once because I have a lot of inventory, which I'm very proud of myself for putting together, but it's gonna take a while. And normally why I don't have stuff up on my Etsy when I say I'm going to is because I convince myself I need every single thing ready and listed and like released all in the same moment rather than like doing stuff in small batches, which is what I'm gonna have to do for this so I don't completely overwhelm myself. Oh, I also have some like cardigans. To That's right, I made like 10 cardigans in a couple days, so I'm also gonna be listing some of the clothes. That's gonna be a little more involved for the photography because I have to fit my whole body or like my whole dress form in frame and I can't do that with the light box I made for like little zipper pouches. <laughs> and listen, I would not have been able to go without event income for these past few years without everybody over on Patreon. Like, you're why I was able to keep doing this. Thank you for caring so hard about the stuff I'm making and putting out in the world. And uh, Bert also appreciates it because half of my week I get to work at home and uh, he gets to sleep by my feet all day. Then also pester me for lunch breaks, which is what he's currently doing. It's time to go for a little walk and finally eat something because I don't actually think I had breakfast yet and it's about 1.30. All right, me and this little meatball are gonna go. We will see you back here with another video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm-mm.